hello everybody. This is going to be kind of an interesting video here. Today I am going to show you how to tear down a ceiling fan and decide what you're going to keep and what you're not going to keep. Okay? This fan here was $3. I got it off of Craigslist. You've seen it in my other videos. All right, now we have this one. So this is actually from the same guy that the previous fan you saw came from. I also got it along with this fan. So I decided the first fan I was going to put up is going to be this sort of generic, uh, which still works, to my knowledge. This one is having some fundamental issues with screws and flywheels, and I'm pretty sure the motor's toast, but I'm not sure. The thing, though, about it is that it may look vintage because it's got GE vents and antique brass, but in reality, I have a 95% suspicion that this is a Walmart, and I will verify for you. The back side of the fan, the label on it says model number CH52, 1.1 amps, uh, made in Taiwan, serial number 600615. I have to assume this is some sort of store brand generic because there is nothing special about it and it's pretty low quality. But there are some parts off of these that you can easily salvage, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take these blades off. Blades and brackets, unless they're broken or extremely severely bent, you should always keep because 95% of brackets you can use on other fans. So here's your blade, other side. Screws like this you really don't need to keep, not worth anything, but you should keep the screws that are mounted to the brackets and you should keep the screws, well yeah, keep the screws that are right here. Keep these screws. Blades, always keep. Brackets, unless they're severely bent, always keep. Okay, so here's those pieces. What am I looking for? So you should always keep mounting brackets, especially when they're like this, just a generic one. And when you have all the screws, these are a big ticket item. Keep these. Time to dive into the fan. So, so now, parts on these. These little vent screens, by the way, are not the or dust guards, whatever you want to call them, are not that useful. And so you can just, just get rid of them. might cause dust to go flying in the air. Here's the dust guard. This is garbage. It's got the imprints. Don't need that. So next part, you want to do the light assembly, which I'm going to use a manual screwdriver for. These little screws that come off of this typically are not worth keeping just because they're so little and not really going to do anything. I cannot get this off. So at this point, I would just say break it because you're probably not going to get it off if it's that hard to get off. See, light kits, oh yeah, you also want to take that and then you know you can start to, which way does this particular one go? These little caps, wire nuts you should always keep. This little cap here, undo that. and then take your drill and unscrew the switch cap. Switch cap, switch cap screws I would keep because they can be useful. And there you go. Undo these two wires here that are holding in the light kit. And this thing smells like burnt electric. Like that, save these. This white wire you don't need to save. The switch cap and switch cap screws are good to save. Now, 
since I broke this, I'm not going to keep it. I had to break it to get it out, so it is now not... Yeah, that's broken. Alright, so, how to scrap a light kit. First thing you should take are the light sockets, because these are the best, like, one of my favorite things to take off of fans, because every fan has them. Take off these little... There's a screw. You might have another wire knot to undo right here. That's okay. Just pull these out, and you have a light socket. Set that in there. That's a keeper. There's a second fixture, and there's the third one. So now all that's left is your... That sucks. This is a no-keep. Just put that up here. That sucks. So the pull chain here, I'll show you. This is now worth nothing, so scrap this. Well, I was going to say you want to always keep pull chains unless they're corroded and shit like that. This particular pull chain is a light. I'm not going to keep this because it's all corroded and stuff. As you could see, if the pull chain is in good shape, if both of the wires are like this, keep it. But see how this one is all cracked and it's getting ready to fray? This is not worth anything. You can get rid of this. Now come to the fan pull chain. Okay, this has never been taken off. Ugh. Undo this. Let's take a look, see at the fan. I'm going to go ahead and undo all of the wire nuts and keep all of them because they are all worth something. And at some point, the pull chain switch, oh, it's going to come free. And there you have it. This particular pull chain switch, where's the little decorative nut? Jin Yu. This is in good shape. Sounds like a solid switch. I'm inspecting the wires. Keep this. I keep all the pull chain switches possible. I also keep all the wire knots possible. Come here and take all of these wire knots out. They are all good to have. You will trust me on this. I buy wire knots very often. These are such little things that can cost so much. For me, it was $3. Let's take every wire knot. Now comes the reverse switch. If your fan has a reverse pull chain, I've never worked on one, but I would presume you would look at it like a regular pull chain. If it's in good shape, keep. If it's not, don't. In particular, for me, I tend to not keep reverse switches because I don't do anything with them that would be worth... I don't really install reverse switches on fans. So, let me show you. We'll pull out this reverse switch. I don't really care that that fell through. Here's the reverse switch. In particular, with me, I tend to not do anything with these. And so, for me, I'm not going to keep this. As you can see, it's got all the wires going. Well... Mm. let's keep it for now and we'll analyze it later. And then of course you have the capacitor, which I always keep. This is the start capacitor, Seika Taiwan. Keep, keep, keep. Now we get to the fun part of disassembling the motor. So of course these have just screws here that I'm not going to keep that hold the bottom housing plate on that are not worth it. I have taken this fan apart before, that's why they're so loose, because I just tight, hand tightened them to look put together for the video. Face plates, it's your choice. I tend to like to keep face plates and I can use them for decoration. This one's in good shape, so I'm gonna keep it. Oh yeah, and here's the brass side band. This can be useful. Here's a white wire. This is the white wire that runs to the fan. No need. Take the black one, too, and do it. Black one. And blue one. Rest of these, cut out. I guess if you wanted to, 
you could keep the white and the blue and the black, but I'm not gonna. Well, actually, yeah. Since these are in good shape, let me see. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and keep these. Use some pliers to loosen this. This little nut. And then this. Whole thing comes right off. Again, it's up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and keep this because it could be worth something. Now you come through and unscrew the motor screws. Top motor housing here. This little clip, take that off, no need. It's going to take some maneuvers, but eventually you can twist this thing to being loose. Obviously, it's not meant to come apart, so it's difficult. It's uh, three minutes in or something, and I am just now able to... After a while, you can hand loosen this. It just... It all depends on your circumstances here. Hold this bottom piece that I'll show you what I'm holding here in a minute. Off. Nope. This clip comes off. Nope. Canopy. You can keep this little thing you don't need. This, I would go ahead and, well, you're not going to use it, so. Well, yeah, we'll keep it because we can make the housing and shit. Take this off. Here's the. Walmart grade industrial motor. Shouldn't be doing this on carpet. It's your choice whether you want to do this, but I'm gonna. just to take some compressed air, blow it off. So the next step of this video, I don't like my camera, so we're gonna, never mind, I'm kidding. Motor, here's the interesting part, taking this part off. Hold, give it about five taps, and a little more. It should, you can tap either side, it doesn't matter. Oh, it's not coming off because of this thing. Okay, now that you have this little plate off, you can... Oh, yeah. This piece, too, scrap. Just take it and beat it with a hammer a bunch. All right, once you have the electric motor out here, if you know how to take the copper off, be my guess, but I don't, so this is just going to be a scrap. All right, that's about going to do it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe and click like if you like what you see. Follow me on the internet or the web, wix.com slash theelevatorworld slash fans. Bye-bye, and I'm going to clean up this mess.